If you'd like to learn about my experience switching to an AMD GPU after using NVIDIA for the last 10 years, you can do so right over here. And today we're going to be looking at the best new and used GPU choices that provide the best bang for the buck starting from 70 all the way to over $8,500 so that you can pick whatever fits your budget. In case you have a weaker or an older CPU and not sure which graphics card to pick, don't worry, I'll try to help you with that as well. Keep in mind that the cards we're going to be checking are what's available as of late August, all the links for each graphics card will be provided in the description, and I'll be updating the links as availability changes and better graphics cards release in the upcoming weeks. Okay, let's jump right into it with brand new options, but make sure to also check what the used market has to offer towards the end of the video before making the final decision. Starting off with budget options, which is an area where AMD absolutely dominates, we have the 8GB RX 580, which, if I'm not mistaken, can still be found brand new from XFX for $130 on Amazon. At this price range, there is pretty much nothing you can go for that makes sense. For a little more, there is the 6500 XT, which does consume less power, yet performance-wise, it's just not very good. You're getting 4GB of VRAM and 4 PCIe lanes, which is enough reasons for me to not recommend it, especially if you're still on a PCIe Gen 3 system or older. The RX 580 is definitely the card to go for if you're on an extremely tight budget, and while it is 6 years old at this point and is a little power hungry, there is not a lot that this card won't be able to run using medium to high settings. At a little over $200, we have the RX 6600, and once again, there is simply no better alternative at this price. This thing is capable of delivering RTX 3060 levels of performance while being priced lower than a 3050. Given you have a decent CPU, there is literally not a single game you won't be able to run, in some cases even at 1440p, so if you can increase your budget, skip the 580 and go for this one, because the jump in performance is absolutely massive and without a doubt worth it. By the way, I'm currently testing a 6600 XT for a revisit video, make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss it, which is a bit better than the regular 6600, and it handles everything like a champ. As prices increase, choosing an NVIDIA GPU over AMD doesn't sound so crazy anymore. In the range of $250 to $300, you can either go for the RX 7600 or the RTX 4060. As much as we all hate the latest entry-level graphics cards from AMD and Nvidia, at these prices, these cards make more sense than going for the 6650 XT or the 3060 12GB. The reason being is they cost just a little more than their predecessors while also having AV1, being more efficient and generally delivering better performance. The only downside of getting the 4060 instead of the 3060 is that you lose 4GB of VRAM, but as long as you don't fully max out the graphics in some of the latest titles, you'll be fine. When it comes to the 7600 versus the 4060, the Nvidia GPU is $20 to $30 more expensive, though it does overall perform better and has more features, so you do get what you pay for. Also, I want to clarify that when I speak about performance, I'm talking about gaming performance, and if you're going to be using your GPU for productivity, just go for the closest Nvidia GPU. When it comes to mid-range, at about $340, we have the RX 6700 XT and the RTX 3060 Ti, both of which are great cards and perform identically without ray tracing. With ray tracing enabled, the 3060 Ti is capable of pulling ahead in some titles, though with the 6700 XT you're getting more VRAM. In case you're willing to pay a little more, you can go for the 6750 XT at around $360, or for just a bit more, you can pick an 8GB RTX 4060 Ti. 
In terms of rasterized performance, they trade blows, but the 4060 Ti is more efficient, has a superior upscaler, AV1 encoding, and performs better with ray tracing enabled. So unless you really need 12GB of memory, the 4060 Ti seems to make more sense. In case you haven't been watching Daniel Owen lately, make sure to completely ignore the 16GB 4060 Ti, because as he demonstrated in his video, buying it simply doesn't make sense, unless it costs $450 or less. The RX 6800 XT, which costs about the same, is a much better GPU, not only when it comes to rasterized performance, but also in ray tracing, since it's so far ahead in terms of raw performance that enabling RT doesn't reduce its performance as much. The only downside would be the power consumption, yet given the performance increase, it is totally worth it. In case your budget is a little smaller than that, the non-XT 6800 is also a great bank for the buck card, which I decided to get myself recently. God, this thing is massive. You can find it for as little as $430 as of recording this video, and I'll leave a link for it as well. At this price range, there is nothing NVIDIA has to offer that is even close to AMD in terms of performance. Next up, at the $600 to $700 price bracket, we have the RTX 4070 and the RX 6950 XT. The Radeon GPU is a bit more expensive, though is quite a bit better when it comes to rasterized performance. In fact, if rasterized performance is all you care about, just get the 6800 XT. It is cheaper, performs mostly the same as the 4070, and you're also getting more VRAM with it. But if you're going to be using ray tracing, upscaling, or AV1 and care about efficiency, the $600 RTX 4070 is the better buy. If you have a budget of just below 800 bucks, you can choose between the 7900 XT and the RTX 4070 Ti. Once again, by going with Radeon, we're getting better non-RT performance, more VRAM, and with 7000 series, there is now also AV1 support and improved ray tracing performance over 6000 series, though generally, the similarly priced NVIDIA GPU does still perform better with ray tracing enabled. The gap just isn't as big anymore. This means that there are now less advantages that the 4070 Ti has if we don't take into account productivity performance, which are superior upscaling and efficiency. Speaking of efficiency, while previous generation of Radeon GPUs did very well compared to GeForce, this generation it's basically the opposite. Nvidia is much more efficient than AMD as demonstrated in these results by Optimum Tech, which you can watch up here. And finally, we get to the best performing graphics cards money can buy. There is the RX 7900 XTX, which is literally the best GPU you can get under $1,000. Nvidia simply has nothing that can beat it at this price. In fact, performance-wise, the closest competitor from Team Green is the RTX 4080, but it costs at least $150 more and in a lot of cases isn't even capable of outperforming the 7900 XTX unless we talk about ray tracing. Personally, I believe the price premium to be way too high. Maybe it's because I never cared enough about reflections, upscaling and whatnot. It just never was my priority. But if it is something you know you're going to use, I guess it's worth it. I don't think our last card needs an introduction, but just in case you didn't know, if you want the best of the best, the RTX 4090 is the only option, though you do need to pay a fortune for it. It starts from 1600 and goes all the way up to 2600, which is just an insane difference for the same card. Alright, so now let's have a quick look at the used market, because for the same price, in some cases you can get so much more performance. Personally, I've been buying used hardware for years. In fact, the last 5 graphics cards that I bought all were used, the RX 6800 included, alongside other components such as motherboards, CPUs, etc. So it is definitely worth having a look at what the used market has to offer. Just make sure to test whatever it is that you're buying as much as you can, and of course, buy used parts at your own risk. 
First up, once again, we have the 8GB RX 580, which you can find for as little as $60 on the used market. Like I mentioned, this thing for the most part performs better than the brand new 6500 XT, just make sure to get the non-cut down version, which has 2304 stream processors. Now, in case you prefer NVIDIA, you could go for something like a GTX 1060, but the thing is, it performs worse, has 6GB of VRAM, and generally costs more, so personally, I don't see a point in going with it. Once we add another 30 bucks on top of the 580's price, we get the GTX 1070, which I actually reviewed quite recently, you can check out the revisit up here. Once again, we're getting 8GB of VRAM, and at $100, I believe this to be the best option out there. If you can increase your budget, you can either get yourself a 5600 XT or a GTX 1080. The 1080 costs a little more and is an older GPU, so keep in mind that chances of it dying on you are higher, but it does perform better compared to the 5600 XT and has 2 more gigabytes of VRAM. At $150, you can get a 5700 XT, which is an absolute bargain considering you're getting RX 7600-like performance for much less. It is also cheaper than cards such as the 12GB 3060 and the 2070, while delivering similar or better performance. Finally, I guess you can go for the RTX 3070 or the RX 6700 XT at $280, though in general I'd say the 3070 makes more sense here due to upscaling and ray tracing, even if they're not that far away from each other in terms of rasterized performance, so go for the 6700 XT only if you can find it for cheaper. Other than these options, I couldn't find anything else on the used market that makes sense. For example, I was thinking that the 1080 Ti would be a great deal, but considering it costs about $200 while not being necessarily better than the 5700 XT, it's really hard for me to recommend it. But in case you can't live without Nvidia, I guess something like an RTX 2070 Super at $200 is a relatively good deal. And there you have it, these are pretty much the best graphics cards you can go for at each price point, once again links for every single GPU will be provided in the description. If you found this video helpful, make sure to have a look around the channel and feel free to join my Discord and follow me on social media, links for which you can find below. Thank you all for watching, be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content and I'll see y'all in the next one.